second, Michael. You guys were down 14 points with four minutes left in the third quarter. How did you guys stem that momentum and, and flip it in your favor and on to the second half in the win? Yeah, I think the first thing, Mike, was um, – well, the first thing is uh, a lot of respect for the Portland Trail Blazers uh, organization. Uh, hell of a team, division rival. Uh, I think Terry Stops does a great job. Uh, what he's been able to do year in and year out with that squad, uh, I think he deserves uh, more credit than he gets. And, you know, what can you say about their backcourt? Those guys are fantastic. So, uh, hell of a hard-fought series. A lot of respect for the Blazers. Um, I think the key, Mike, was when they were going on runs and we weren't playing our best, every huddle was positive, staying engaged, uh, demanding guys to be better, but staying together. You know, uh, I think we've shown as a group, every time we hit adversity, most times, you know, we never run from it. We buckle down, we embrace it, and we find a way. Uh, and so we weathered the storm, to your point. We weathered the storm. Uh, and then I thought that fourth quarter, you know, to come in here and win a game six, an elimination game, uh, which are always so hard, uh, to hold them to 14 points in the fourth quarter, 28% uh, from the field, 0 of 5 from three, that's how you close out a game. And I thought Monte Morris late and Nicole Jokic late were phenomenal. Michael Porter early was terrific. Uh, and Aaron Gordon's corner three was a big, big shot. So uh, I love our team. I, I love every player in our locker room, one through 17. Uh, we continue to find ways to uh, to win. Last year, this year, I mean, people don't realize that we're missing right now with injuries. So uh, I couldn't be more proud of a group of players that I truly love coaching every single day. Michael Spencer, CBS Denver. Hey, Michael, you said before the game you didn't want to counterpunch. You wanted to punch. Obviously, you touched on MPJ's performance in the first quarter there. How, how important was that for him to kind of carry you guys in the first? It was huge. You know, I mean, he, he scored, I think, 22 in that first quarter. Uh, Nicole got in foul trouble, and uh, I loved seeing Michael so aggressive. Uh, if you're a Denver Nuggets fan, and, and I know we're, we're, we're a big group, we're all over the place. Here's a young man, 26 points. Back-to-back -back games. He's only a second-year player. Uh, so Michael's only going to get better than he already is, which is a scary thought. Um, so it was important for Michael to get off that start because he kind of kept us afloat. Um, but, you know, that was a hard-fought game, uh, and, and everybody that played contributed to it. And even the guys, I've said this a lot this series, Will Barton, P.J. Dozier, DeVale McGee, Jamal Murray, those guys, on the, we have to give them a seatbelt. They're so excited and into it and passionate. Uh, that's why I love that group because it's never about me. It's always about the group, the collective unit. And uh, that's why we have a special culture. Ashley Neville, Mile High Sports. Hey coach, congrats on the win. So exciting. Um, what was the key to stopping Damian Lillard in the fourth quarter? Went one for six and five points. Um, and how important was it to not allow him to get off like he did in uh, game five? Yeah, obviously, uh, game five, he was uh, one of the best playoff performances anybody will ever see. Uh, he set a record for threes made in the game at 12. Um, I did not see this play, actually, but a couple of my coaches said there was a play in the fourth quarter where Dane fell hard, and I believe he might have hit his head. Uh, knowing Damian Lillard, knowing where he's from, uh, watching him work out before him coming into the NBA, uh, he's probably not going to use any excuses. You know, that's not in his nature. That kid is a warrior. Uh, and I have the ultimate respect for him. But I think once he hit his head, uh, he really wasn't the same after that. So, yeah, we did a good job. But he, I don't think he was right after falling down, hitting his head. Uh, but obviously, he requires a tremendous amount of attention. We gave him the requisite amount of attention. And uh, we were able to pull it out. I thought late, I thought our, our fourth quarter offensive execution uh, was terrific. We were poised. We were under control. Monte and Nicole Jokic playing that two-man game. Uh, Monte held a pass to Nicola Rowland for the N1. Uh, it was just a high level of play on both ends. And I think, I mean, that's three years in a row we've advanced out of the first round, uh, which I don't think has been done in Denver uh, in quite a long time. So uh, I can't wait to get home. I think next round they're going to allow more fans in the arena. So here's my message to Nuggets Nation. Come out, be loud, make Ball Arena the toughest place to play in the NBA. We need you. Matt Moore, the Action Network. Michael, Monte's been in the system the whole time, played in the G League, and then 
obviously just played a huge role in these last two games. Can you speak to what exactly that makes him so ready for these type of moments after, especially after his first playoff struggles that first year? And then also at what point did you kind of realize that you could attack more in pick and roll with Monte in that two man game as the series went on? Yeah, well, just in regards to Monte, you know, I remember the night we drafted him, you know, uh, towards the end of the second round. And there were a couple of guys that we were talking about. And uh, I, I remember I had an affinity for Monte Morris uh, because being a former point guard, uh, I loved how he approached the game. You know, uh, he was one of the all time leaders in assist turnover ratio in NCAA history. Uh, he's a floor general, he makes the right play, he doesn't make mistakes. And head coaches love players like that. And that, as you mentioned, Matt, he goes to the G League, he pays his dues. Second year, you know, he's probably going to be a third-string point guard if Isaiah Thomas is healthy. IT is not healthy for a while, longer than we all expected. And Monte took full advantage of the opportunity, embraced it, and was phenomenal. Um, so uh, I knew the Monte Morris we saw in the first four games was uh, not the Monte Morris that we all expect. And last game, game five, that tonight, game six, he was aggressive. He was confident. I gave him a big hug, told him how much I loved him. And he said, Coach, just thank you for showing confidence in me. And, and that reminds me of something I learned from my father a long time ago. The greatest gift I can give any of our players is confidence. If they know I have their back, they're going to go out there and play to the best of their ability. Uh, and, and what Monte has done the last two games has been terrific. Uh, I just want to add this. I just told that team this. Hell of a win, come in here, uh, win a game six on the road is great, but we're not satisfied. You know, our goal coming into the season was not to get out of the first round. Uh, we have much bigger goals. Hopefully we can get a player or two healthy moving into the second round. Uh, so we're going to enjoy it for a moment, and then we'll be back to work as we try to wait to see who we play next round, whether it's Phoenix or the Lakers. Jacob Toby, Nine News Denver. So it's just, you know, a lot of people may not know about all the injuries that, that you guys have gone through. Just what does it say about, about especially the younger players that are getting so much experience with you guys that they can come in here and, and win? Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny you ask that question because, uh, you know, you see all these other teams in the playoffs and you know, a lot is made of guys being out with injuries. This guy's going to miss a game. He's going to miss another game. I mean, Jamal Murray's been out for 24 games now. And look what we've done without a guy that was one of the best players in the bubble last year. Will Barton, we're down two starters. We're down another guy, P.J. Dozier, who's one of the first guys off the bench. So what it says about our group is that we're resilient, we're mentally tough, we believe in ourselves, we believe in our teammates. Um, so that's a great feeling. You know, that's not always the case. I've been in this game for a long time. Um, so, uh, and we're going to need that same resolve moving forward. You know, I mean, I'm hoping that we can get a player or two back, but if we don't, what a great opportunity. Faku's a rookie. Austin's been around the block, but Monte's still young. Michael's still young. I mean, Marcus Howard, we're playing Marcus Howard. He's a two-way player. Name one other NBA team in the playoff that's playing two-way players like we are. Uh, but that's why I love that group, because no matter who you call upon, they're ready to go out there and simply do their job. And that's all you can ask. Katie Wingy, Altitude Sports. Hey, Coach. Obviously, well, first off, congratulations. Obviously, we've spent all season long talking about how good Nikola Jokic has been his MVP season. But once again, it feels like he took his game to another level in this series. How did he do that? And what did you see from him that maybe surprised you in a way that you hadn't been surprised before? Well, it's tough for Nikola to surprise me. Uh, and I think you can understand that, Katie, because you've been around here for a while. Uh, Nikola's been... <laughs> Incredible for, for many years now. And, and I think in our four wins in this series, he averaged 36 or 37 points per game, uh, probably close to 10 rebounds and probably close to six or seven assists. Uh, and that's why he's the clear cut MVP because you can take any away from our, anybody away from our team. But if we have Nicola, you can put me, Wes Unsell, Ryan Bowen, Charles Class, David, whoever you want out there, and we're going to find a way to compete because that's how great he is. Now, that's probably a little bit of an exaggeration. Um, so I loved it. I said at halftime, I said, we have to get Nicola gone. He got in the early foul trouble. He only took seven shots in the first half. Our best player can't have seven shots at halftime. Uh, and I liked his energy. He was much more aggressive to catch, face, attack Nurkic. Uh, they went small, put a small guy on him. He was aggressive backing down to the basket, scoring. Uh, when you see an aggressive Nikola Jokic, 
uh, that is a welcome sight, and obviously he becomes really hard to guard because he's going to score or get somebody else a wide open shot, uh, and that's what makes him great in my book. All right, Coach, we got time for one more. We're going to end with Joel Rush from Forbes. Hey, Coach, congratulations. Uh, I think it was after game three when you had cited all the kind of hustle and energy stats, uh, like points off turnovers and points in the paint and such, and you seemed to win most of those tonight as well. So what does that say about your team that you're able to do that on the road? Well, I think, you know, uh, that was the message coming in, Joe. Like, uh, you know, we're th up 3-2 in the series, but for us to come into their building and win a closeout game on the road, we have to be the aggressor. We have to have great activity. We have to be physical, sense of urgency. Uh, like I mentioned pregame, it wasn't about weathering their storm. It was about us being the storm. It was us bringing it from the get-go. And even when things weren't going our way and it and looked a little bleak, staying with it, staying connected, staying positive, and that allows you to come out of it on the other side. So uh, what it says about our team is that we understand when we play a certain way, a certain style of basketball, we're a really tough team to beat. When we are soft, we're not active, we're not running, we don't play with pace, we don't hit somebody, then we're just an average team. Uh, so, you know, let's get back to Denver, feel good about this for a second, figure out who we play, and then, uh, and then back to the drawing board and uh, see if we can find a way to continue to move forward. Thank you, everybody.